Hello, OJCS students. Today we're going to be reading a book called How This Book Was Made by Mac Barnett and Adam Rex. If you've ever wondered how a book goes from an idea to something that you can hold in your hand and read, this is going to explain it to you. At first, this book wasn't a book. It was an idea. Ideas can come at funny times. When I had the idea for this book, I went to a quiet place and I wrote. I wrote from early in the morning until late at night. It was very hard work. Soon I had a bunch of words on paper. Those words were first draft. The first draft of this book was not so good. Neither was the second draft, or the third, or the twelfth. But writing lots of drafts is a useful part of the writing process. For instance, when the tiger came back for revenge because I beat him in arm wrestling, I burned these drafts and scared him away. I worked and I worked, and with the 21st draft, I was done. So I sent my words to my editor in New York City. An editor tells you what parts of your story are good and what parts you need to fix. She's like a teacher. Only she works in a skyscraper and is always eating fancy lunches. My editor called me and said, I love this. This is perfect. Now here are all the things you have to change. And she sent the story back to me. I took some of her advice and I ignored some of her advice. And then I sent the story back to her. She sent the story right back and asked me why I had ignored some of her advice. And I said, I didn't think they were good ideas. And she said, I thought they were great ideas. And I said, well, let's agree to disagree. And she said, let's agree with me. And I said, you're not the boss of me. And it went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Until most of the United States of America was crossed out. Many Americans were not happy about this. Eventually, my editor loved all my words, and I loved all my words. Even the tiger, who had returned with a posse, loved all my words. I was finished writing, but this book was still not a book. The words needed pictures, so my editor in New York sent them to an illustrator in Arizona. It took the illustrator a very long time to draw all the pictures for this book. I don't know what he was doing that whole time, but he must have been working very hard. I sat around and waited. Finally, the illustrator sent all his artwork to New York, and his art and my text sat in a skyscraper waiting to be printed. Now, the fastest way to get this book to bookstores and libraries would be to print it nearby in New York or Philadelphia or even Miami. But this book was printed in Malaysia. Malaysia, where contraptions called printing presses rumble and steam, a lady put the words and the art into one side of the machine. And out the other end came this book. And then another book. 
and another and another. Thousands and thousands of books. This book was buried below a great pile so tall you could see it from space. Astronauts looked down at Earth that day and saw a stack of books and the Great Wall of China right next to each other. They smiled, then floated around a bunch while eating astronaut ice cream. In other words, that part isn't true. <laughs> but that's science. This is literature. And at last, this book was ready to be read. It needed to get to the United States as fast as it could. Of course, the fastest way would be to put them on a jet. But this book got put on a boat. A slow boat took all the books across the ocean. The journey was dull. Until the pirates arrived. The pirates swarmed the boat and quickly overran it. They tied up the crew and stole the captain's keys. The lead buccaneer kicked the hatch to the ship's hold. The pirates held their breath and imagined their treasure. There was no gold inside, just books. Pirates don't read, so they sailed away. When this book came into harbor, it was put on a truck. The driver put the truck into gear and drove down the highway. He braked hard for a tiger crossing the road, and this book fell out the back. An eagle swooped down and grabbed this book for her babies. To eat, not to read. Eagles don't read books either. She ripped out a corner, but her chicks didn't like it. They pushed this book out of the nest. This book briefly served as a roof for a toad until it was picked up by a dog that brought it back to its owner, who lost it that night on a bad hand of poker. To a truck driver whose load was one book short, he made his delivery to a woman who put it on a shelf next to many other books. This book waited. And I waited. And the tiger waited, and his posse waited, and the pirates and astronauts, and then the editor waited, and the illustrator, and the old lady, and her dog waited, and the truck driver, and the angry ink-splattered Americans, and the family of eagles, and the people in Malaysia. They waited. We all waited, here in this book, which was practically bursting, just waiting for someone to open it. Because a book for someone, because a book can have words and pictures and paper and tigers, but a book still isn't a book, not really until it has a reader. And then you came along. And you read this book through to the very last page, which was how this book was made. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. And of course, some of it is a bit of baloney, but there was a lot of real information about how books get made in this book. And I'm going to be posting along with this story time video, a video about how books are actually made. So please take a moment to watch that video and I hope you like the story. Bye.